Hey guys, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll show you how to germinate pepper seeds fast. So pepper seeds need three things to germinate properly. Number one is moisture. That's why when we're storing our pepper seeds, we dry them out beforehand. We don't want them to start germinating or to grow mold. Number two is oxygen. So we want a really well aerated soil mixture. That's why we're gonna use a seed starter mix instead of potting soil to start our seeds. And number three, and most importantly, is warmth. Peppers come from a warm climate and they germinate best at temperatures between 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty warm, but we'll show you some tips on how we keep our seeds warm during germination. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how we go through the process. You can follow along and do exactly as we do. And we'll give you some tips along the way just to make sure that your germination success rate is as high as possible for your peppers. Now this video is just about germination, but if you wanna take a deep dive and really get the most out of your pepper plants this year, check out our ebook. The first link in the description will give you a preview of the book. More about that at the end of the video, but for now, let's get planting our pepper seeds. But before you plant, the first thing that you wanna figure out is when should you plant your pepper seeds? Generally speaking, most pepper varieties need about eight weeks indoors before they're ready for the outdoors. We're in zone six and we plant in mid-March. Uh, our last frost date is mid-May. You can easily find out your hardiness zone and when your last date of frost is, and you'll just subtract eight weeks. The only exception to that is if you're growing things like ghost peppers or really, really hot varieties, they take even longer to germinate and to produce ripe pods. So you might wanna add another two weeks. So maybe the beginning of March, if you're in the same zone as us. So maybe 10 weeks for super hot varieties. Otherwise, eight weeks should be just fine. Okay, let's start with the supplies that you'll need. First, you'll need a seed starter mix. This is different from soil because it doesn't contain any nutrients, and it's just made up of highly aerated materials like sphagnum, peat moss, vermiculite, and perlite. You could use standard potting mix, but for better germination rates, a seed starter mix is ideal. You'll need a mixing container. We're just gonna use one of our 12 inch pots, but you could use a five gallon bucket or a wheelbarrow, or even just a small bowl if you're filling just a few seed cells. Some water to add to the dry seed starter mix. The amount of water that you'll need will depend on how many seedling cells you plan to use. And finally, you'll need your seed cells. Also optional is a pair of gloves to keep your hands from getting dirty. To prepare the mix, start by pouring the required amount of seed starter mix into your mixing container. We're starting two full trays of seeds here, so we'll need quite a bit. Then start by adding a small amount of water and mixing thoroughly. Continue to add water slowly and mixing until the mix is damp and sticks together when squeezed. If the mixture drips water when you squeeze it, it's too wet, so add some more mix in to dry it out. Make sure you dig deep and get all the way to the bottom of the mix so that it is evenly moistened. You don't wanna have any dry spots in your mixture. Next, add the prepared seed starter mix to your seed cells. Fill all the cells thoroughly, then press to compress the mix. Then add more mix to top off all the cells. One common question we get is how hard to compress the soil for starting seeds. We recommend pressing firmly with your thumb or finger until you start to feel some resistance, then add more mix until it's full and compress again. Don't force the mix to be fully compacted, but don't leave too much air either. If you don't compress at all, the mix will just collapse the first time you water. Now, a big shout out to Bootstrap Farmer. They sent this stuff over to us. If you're interested in really high quality growing supplies, sort of built to last quality, Bootstrap Farmer has some amazing, amazing stuff. These things can hold up all sorts of weight. They use really nice, high-quality, BPA-free plastics that you can reuse year after year. They also have seed trays, which are also super strong. I mean, I think they put like a 45-pound weight. I, I just couldn't believe that it was real when they showed it. I just wanted to call out because I was really impressed with the quality. So check out the link in the description if you're interested, and back to planting. After all your seed cells are full of pre-moistened mix, it's time to start planting the pepper seeds. But before you plant, be sure to get organized. Since we plant so many different types of peppers each year, it's important to keep track of which seed cells contain which type of plant. Young seedlings all look so similar, so be sure to either label the cells beforehand or create a chart corresponding to your pepper varieties. To plant pepper seeds, start by placing one or several seeds in each cell. We like to add a few seeds per cell to ensure each variety germinates at least one plant. But you could just plant one or two seeds if you're confident in the viability of your seeds. After all the seeds have been planted on the surface, use a pen or pencil tip to bury each seed about a quarter inch deep below the surface. Cover the seeds gently with the mixture. If you plant one seed at a time, you may want to take note of which seeds have been planted as you go along. After the seeds are planted, generously mist the surface with a spray bottle if you have one. This will make sure each seed is moistened and happy. 
Next, we'll put our seeds into a warm location. Most pepper seeds germinate best in temperatures between 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is a lot warmer than most homes are kept, so we use this thing called a seedling heat mat to keep the temperatures up. This one relatively cheap item has had the most significant impact on improving our germination rates. If you're interested, check the description below where you can get one. But here's how it works. A temperature probe is inserted into the soil mix in one of the seed cells. This measures the temperature constantly, and if it dips below your setting, the heat turns on. This maintains a warm temperature as the seeds germinate. We recommend setting the temperature to 80 degrees Fahrenheit to start. Now place the prepared seed trays on top of the seed heating mat and cover with the humidity dome. You never want your seeds to dry out during germination. However, oxygen is important too, so fan out the trays once a day or so before covering them back up. If the soil surface looks a little dry, you can use the spray bottle to moisten it back up. You could also bottom water, but don't let the mix get soaking wet, as this could lead to mold and other problems. And now the question, how long before these seeds will actually germinate? Most pepper varieties take between 7 and 14 days to germinate, but some can take even longer. Some of our Rakoto pepper seeds took around 3 full weeks to sprout. Be patient and keep checking for signs of life. As soon as your first seedling sprouts, we recommend removing the humidity dome and placing the plants under light. Our grow light is pretty intense, it's about 100 watts, so we start at about 18 to 24 inches in height above the seedlings. If your light is less bright, you can probably put it a little bit closer to the seedlings. Keep the unsprouted seed cells moist by continuing to spray the soil surface once or twice a day. If some of your cells end up with multiple plants, you can simply pluck the unwanted plants out, leaving just one plant per cell. You could also replant these seedlings if desired. Soon you'll be fertilizing and eventually transplanting into larger pots with potting mix. Until then, keep the soil moist but not soaked, well aerated with a fan or an open window, and under the grow lights for 12 to 16 hours per day. The temperature should also be kept between 70 and 80 degrees once the plants have sprouted, and ideally not below 60 degrees Fahrenheit at night. If you'd like more information about growing peppers all the way through to harvesting and using your peppers, check out the link in the description to check out our ebook. We're really excited with what it has to offer. It's basically taking you from point A, you know, choosing your pepper varieties all the way through to harvesting and using and everything in between. It can really help you avoid making mistakes and diagnose problems and fix them along the growing journey. So check it out, peppergeek.com or click the first link in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit that subscribe button and join the Pepper Geek family. It's a great community of pepper growers and gardeners alike. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.